Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Country Music Armadillo Show. We've got a great show for you here today. I'm joined here in the studio by the grandson of the legendary Waylon Jennings. It is a great honor for me to introduce to you Way Jennings. Way, thanks for joining us on the show here today. You bet, brother. Thank you. So, Glad to be here. let's talk a little bit about your family history because I, I just want to share the story real quick. Uh, I was at a show Friday night with Way, and there was a, a young lady there who <laughs> mistakenly thought that you were you were Shooter's son. So, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how, but just for the sake of the record, let's go ahead and, and break down your family history. You're obviously Waylon's grandson, but yeah. take us from there. Yeah, well, Shooter and me, we grew up more like brothers, man. We're about the same age. He's a year and a half older than me. Um, he's my grandfather and my, my grandmother's youngest son. Um, my step-grandmother, I guess Jesse is my step-grandmother. My, my real grandmother by blood is Maxine, who is my dad, my uncle, and my aunt's mother. And my dad is Terry Jennings, the oldest son. Um, which is Shooter's older brother. Uh, Terry's got a great book out right now about yeah. your grandfather, uh, Waylon Tales, My Outlaw Dad. Must read if you haven't picked it up. I don't know what you're doing with your life. Go out and buy it. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, it's a good book. Oh, I'm absolutely. ready to cover to cover without stopping. Mm -hmm. sure it so, what was it like growing up with Waylon Jennings as your grandfather? <laughs> it was pretty longest time growing up. I didn't realize, you know, I didn't know he was Waylon Jennings. You know what I mean? I didn't know he was a. He's just my grandfather, and he was fun to be around, you know. We started going to shows and stuff. I can't remember how young I was the first one I went to. But it wasn't very long before I grabbed Jesse's mic and ran out there and started singing with him, you know. <laughs> I'm sure he got a thrill out of that. Yeah, he did. He was pretty fun. So you, you talk a lot about Jesse. I, I understand. Oh, I love Jesse. I under, yeah, she's, she's not your biological grandmother, but I understand she's been a big influence in your life. So. Oh, yeah, she's my grandmother. Okay, she, well, not much, by, I mean, not by blood. Yeah, not blood, but but she's been my grandmother since I was born. You know. So your relationship with her is really good. You guys are really close then. Yeah, I mean, we're not really, really, really close, but, wow. but yeah, that's my grandmother. <laughs> you know, close as you can be in the music industry. You know, yeah. because you know people travel all the time. So yeah. have you had the opportunity yet to do a song with her? I don't know. Storms never last on stage with her at Anna Bar J's out in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, it was in Scottsdale, Arizona, I believe, and that was that was really really important to me. That was really good. I mean, we had, it sounded great. We had a great time out there. Oh, I understand. I mean, she still sounds as good today as she did forty yeah, years ago. Really There's good. no fall off there. So, I, I I bet that was a an absolute thrill. So, you talked about growing up with Shooter like a brother. What was that like? Oh, I guess I mean we got along just like brothers do. You know, I mean we don't always get along. But you know he had a he had a computer room. He was into computers. He loved music. You know his favorite band growing up was Nine Inch Nails, and we were all different. You know I had, I was into country music. Little I was just kind of converting because I when I was real young I really liked hip hop music. You know, and then I got into the country music, listening to it. And I guess one one song that was song was it just hit me that. That was a good song, and I started listening to more and more of it. I'm pretty sure it was one of my grandfather's songs. It was like, I was in the country, BJ was in the rap, and he was in the rock. And we all kind of meshed together. We were the kids that got through and thrown in the basement together. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you talked about BJ, that is uh, Struggle, the yeah. hip-hop artist, for those who aren't familiar. Um, what was it like growing up with him? Well, you, you want to talk a little bit about him? Well, we played football together when we were younger. For the Williamson County Cowboys out there in, uh, what city was that? He was in Williamson County, Tennessee. I lived in Franklin. Okay. And he lived in Mount Juliet, but I'm not sure how he ended up on the same football team. But we took care of each other, you know, growing up. We didn't let nobody mess with each other, but we messed with each other. <laughs> and, you know, we were just kids. We were just like any other kids, you know. We played together. We did what other kids do, you know. We love each other. We're family. Now, we go. when you guys were young, is this something that you guys ever imagined for yourselves? You know, all three of you out here. I didn't ever thought it, really. I knew BJ would be a rapper because he, he'd been rapping since he was young. I mean, I mean, and he was really, really good at it. So, 
I always encouraged him to do that, you know. So I was, I'm proud to see what he's doing now. I mean, he had a little bit of a downfall, went to prison for a little while, but he kept his head straight and he kept moving in the right direction. Oh, wow, that's good. So that's what good. he's got going on now, I'm really looking forward to seeing what's, what comes next. Sort of, sort of. Shooter, I never would have thought he would have been in the music, at least not on the, the performing <laughs> end of the music business, because he'd been producing albums since he was eight. And if he would have been, a, I figured he'd have been a drummer, you know what I mean? Because he was always a drummer when he was younger. He loved him drums, I mean. But he loved the piano, too, so I'm not surprised to see him playing piano. But I'm really proud of what he's doing, too. I mean, he doesn't let anybody take any effect on his art other than him. No, doing. no, you can't. You can't rock shooter. He's one hundred percent shooter. You know, I mean, he's not. He's not going to let nobody change his mind about nothing. That's just, that's you know that's that's the thing I'm, I admire most about shooter. He can, he'll he'll do a country album, and then he'll turn around and do a disco album, and he does not care if you don't like it. Mm -hmm. And you get these people that it, it just it drives me insane to no end when they're oh uh, uh, Waylon wouldn't like it. Yeah, well, well, it was all about doing your thing your way, and it's exactly what shooters do. And the last few albums he did, he let shooter have a lot of, lot of control over him. Exactly, and, and he was proud of him. I, I mean, mean, he encouraged shooter to do everything he does. Don't ever think my grandfather wasn't proud of shooter. So, and don't think he wasn't proud of struggle either. He was proud of all of us. That's the kind of man he was. Oh, absolutely. So, when are we going to get the big, the big trio conversion, you guys? I'm not real sure, you know. <laughs> I mean, if they asked me to do something like that, I'd do it, you know. Oh, I think That's it would be a good time. Level. Absolutely. But as of right now, there ain't nothing been talked about so far. But, you know, I just sort of flung myself out here into this music business. And Shooter wouldn't, he didn't see me, he didn't think I was going to do this, you know. And I did, and he's been behind me 100% since I did. But he's also, you know, he's just like me or anybody else, he's going to let you do your own thing. Yep. Let you make your own mistakes and let you make your own decisions, you know. So and you talked about this not being something that you had planned to get into. You you kind of got into this a little later yeah. as time went on. I made a promise to my mama, and so I did it. And I didn't even think anything would come of it. I just talked to this guy on Facebook who wanted to do a David Allen Cole benefit concert in Louisville, Kentucky. A friend of mine bought me a bus ticket, and I jumped on it and hauled ass to Kentucky and did that and picked up a little bit of press on that and been running the roads ever since just trying to do my best to keep my promise good you know? so it wasn't something that you know you you envisioned for yourself very early on it was just right place right well, time I on a cotton farm for eight years in west texas and never thought i would make a music career you know but everybody told me i should try because you know they said i had a good voice so uh, yeah, absolutely. But so I'm not the kind of guy who wants to step on shooter's toes or anything like that. You know what I mean? I'm just, you know, I've got music inside me. I'm trying to get out. That's it. I don't think anyone thinks you're trying to step on shooter's toes. I, that's just silly. If anyone uh -huh. thinks that, I, I, I can't help them, and neither can you. So you You'd talked be surprised about some of the things huh, people think, oh, man. <laughs> well, we had a young girl thinking you were shooter's son Friday night. So yeah. That happens more than you think, too. <laughs> oh, I imagine. Most people think he's my dad. I don't know why. <laughs> well, you guys are close to the same age, right? About, yeah, a year and a half. Okay. A year and a half older than me. <laughs> he started young, didn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right out of the gate. So you talked about doing this as a promise to your mother. I know she was a big influence on you. You play Simple Man every night and dedicated to her. Talk about your mom and, and what she means to you. you know, my mama was my rock growing up. She meant the world to me. She was my best friend. If I had any problems at all, I could go wake my mom up. I mean, any problems. And she would not judge me and punish me. She would help me through it, you know. And we always hung out together. And we did just... She was mom to everybody in my neighborhood. I mean, all my friends would come over to my house and they all called her mom. She was my best friend. And I lost her about five years ago. You know, about four, year, four years ago in September to lung cancer. And, you know, she made me promise her I'd to, to, that I would try to do something with music. And I promised her. But it was kind of one of them promises that I didn't really think about until she was gone. And it took me a year to even get the, go the goal of to do that. You know? Well, I certainly think you've made her proud. So let's talk about your early, early start in music. After this David Allen Coe benefit, 
you know, what was kind of the next steps for you? Well, I had this band called Jennings and James that I put together with a guy, named, his name's James Williams. I guess his name's James Calvin now, I think, on Facebook. But um, we had this Jennings and James thing going for a little while. And then we had a little dis disagreement while I was going out of town to do a video shoot. And that kind of dissolved, you know. And then I kind of pulled together. What happened was I called Billy Gant. <laughs> uh oh. And told him, listen, I got all these dates I got to fill, but I need, I need somebody to play for me. And he said, I got this guy. His name's Nick Geese. And he introduced me to Nick. And me and Nick and him sat around in his kitchen for a little while and sat in Billy's kitchen and played for a little bit. And I was like, this will work. Why don't us three just go at this for a little while? And we did. We went all over the place. We went to Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma. I mean, just pretty much all over the country. Just three of us and two guitars. <laughs> and and the rest is history, man. After that, me and Nick took off for a little while because Billy, he wanted to spend a little more time around the house, you know. And he had a woman he loved, and uh, I respected that. And me and Nick hit the road for a while, and, and then Nick wanted, he got to where he wanted to get back home and be around his family a little more. And uh, then my, um, my cousin died in a car wreck, so I had to move back home. Because it was really devastating to all of our family when we lost Justin. And uh, we needed to be together. So I just kind of quit music for a little while and I went home to help my uncle with his business, you know, because he, I, it was his hand, his hand was, was my cousin. He didn't have nobody else other than my best friend, Curtis. My uncle came to me one day and told me I just can't quit, quit music. So I did some auditions in Lubbock to build a band around there. And that's when I met Jack. And me and Jack started our um, voyage together. <laughs> it's right. been a rough road since then, man, but we got a killer band now. Absolutely. Let's go ahead and take a short break. Uh, I'm going to play one of Way's songs from his album last year. Uh, this is a great tribute to his grandfather. His voice just shows so powerfully through this song. If, if you're a Waylon Jennings fan and you don't listen to this song, you should probably sell your cowboy boots. So this is Way Jennings with Missing You, a great tribute to his grandfather on his 2015 album, Acoustic. It's available now on his CD Baby account, iTunes, Amazon. If you haven't heard this album, or if you've heard Way and you like what you hear, that's a must-have album. It, it's really one of the best albums of, of 2015 that really flew under the radar. So go out and pick that up. You won't be disappointed. I am just a young man. This is true. I have lost a lot of loved ones in my life, but I've found a few. I would be lying if I were to say You don't cross my mind from day to day Grandpa Waylon, I'm missing you You were my hero the one I looked up to You were an outlaw But you were my grandpa too Your voice led me to mine And I hope mine will lead me to you Many years have passed by since I heard you say, hey, hoss, come to Grandpa, let me see your grave. I remember when I was younger and I walked out on stage. You said everybody meet my grandson way. Grandpa Waylon, I'm missing you. You're my hero, the one I look up to. You're an outlaw. 
have law, but you're my grandpa too. Your voice led me to mine, and I know mine will lead me to you. You were loved by so many, and your name will never die. And your voice, it will ring on in oh so many minds. And just how much I love you in words I can't describe. One thing I know for sure, there ain't no grandpa like mine. Yeah, one thing I know for sure The damn show sure ain't no grandpa like mine I love you, Grandpa. Welcome back to the Country Music Armadillo Show. We're back with Wade Jennings. Uh, when we left off talking about Billy Gant, I know you can't overstate Billy's importance to you and your career, so... What is the importance of Billy Gant to Wade Jennings? Well, he showed me a whole bunch, man. man I'm, I met him out there on a mountain in Altamont. They was, we was doing a... It um, started out to be a benefit concert for Troy Rector because he got um, gangrene in his arms and legs. But um, it kind of turned into something got way out of hand. It was like the, this outlaw... It was Outlaw Country Music Hall of Fame. And they had an induct, induction ceremony out there. But the band I showed up with... I just kind of thrown together to do that show, and they just weren't going to work. So I just I kind of fired the whole band, except for the guitar player. And the guitar player started freaking out, thinking it was just going to be me and him up here. So I went up here to the, to the trailer where everybody's hanging out, where all the other acts are hanging out, and I said, I need anybody with a guitar to get your asses out here on the stage with me, because I'm in a pickle. And uh, Josh Morningstar, J.B. Beverly, um... Uh, Clay, Wal Clay, Clay, Clay Walker, Clay Reynolds, <laughs> Clay Reynolds, and Billy Gant all showed up out there. That's kind of an all-star lineup right there. Yeah, and they all came out there and helped me out. And so it was the six of us up there, <laughs> me and a bunch of guitars on this mountain singing, singing music. And the next morning after that, we went over to Billy Gant's hotel room to clean up because they told Angel that we could come over there. And he sang a few songs for me, and ever since that day, man, he's been like, the go my go-to guy for inspiration because that dude can write a song like nobody ever met oh absolutely and he's just a really good guy he gets grumpy every once in a while <laughs> well no at all but i love billy to death yeah, he means more to me than most people do you know so you talked about him being a, such a great songwriter you know i've been listening to you playing some of the original songs you have wrote and and you've definitely got a knack for that did billy tutor you in that or was that watched, something that you've always had? I've watched him and his, his uh, style of writing, how he goes about his, his writing. And he has an intense regimen he goes through to do this. I mean, he locks himself in an apartment with no TV, no nothing. he got a computer he gets on every once in a while, but no distraction from the outside world. He don't listen to the radio. He don't do nothing like He just writes everything he writes, comes out of the inside. He don't come out with no outside influence on And I've tried that. And I don't really watch TV a lot either, you know what I mean? But I do listen to the radio every once in a while. But I think I listen to the radio not for inspiration, but for ideas of what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> there you, know, you go. Is what I do. And then, but he's pretty much what got, he didn't get me into songwriting, but he made me want to do it that much more, you know what I mean? And he made me not afraid to say a lot of things. Because there's a lot of things a lot of people won't say because mm -hmm. they'll feel embarrassed about it or they'll feel like they're making themselves out as weak or something like that. And that's just not the case. Everybody goes through shit like that. You find me a man who says he ain't never cried, I'm gonna find you a liar. You know? He just not many very many people out there that really show an interest in what I'm trying to do and try to, you know, be a positive influence. But he does. He's always been there for me. Billy's just such a stand up guy. Um so when you go to write a song, and I, I love asking this question just because you get so many different answers. What's your process? Do you try and rush through it? You know, I, I've heard people, no. if I can't write a song in 15 minutes, I throw it away. Or do you take time? I know why they do that. Because when you're writing a song, I don't play guitar, you see. 
but I can sort of tell somebody else how, what, what kind of melody I'm looking for, you know what I mean? And then I'll have somebody with a pad and paper, which is usually Jack these days, um, sitting there writing down as it comes out of my mind. Because I got this solid stream of consciousness. If I stop to write it down, it goes away. <laughs> so I just kind of spit it out and he writes it down. And um, we go about it that way. We sort of work on it, punch it out when we can. If it takes four hours, it takes four hours. If it takes four days, it takes four days. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't imagine trying to. I, I I tried writing songs when I was in high school. I I wasn't very good at it. But I I just it the blows songs my never mind. written. The songs <laughs> always almost written. You know, because yeah, it changes yeah. and changes. It always changes. That's and even like with my writing stuff. You know, if I write an article, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on it for a couple of days before mm -hmm. it's ready. So when I hear guys say, "Oh yeah, I write a song. If it's not done in 15 minutes, it's gone because it's not good." Whoa. Well, that's not pump, true. Pump the brakes. I can't do that. That's not true. Sometimes you get little tidbits, ideas, you know what I mean? You can write a verse, and then you just lose it, and you put that verse up, and then you find yourself writing something else along the way, and you'll say, hey, that little tidbit I wrote about a week ago probably fit right here in this song, and it does. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's you know? a lot of pressure, man. Not so, really. you got to make it, you got to want to do it. It ain't something that you got to feel pressure to do. It's something that you got to want to do. Yeah, I mean, and writing it, it in 15 minutes, that's a lot of pressure. Well, <laughs> that's just, I don't know, I never heard anybody say that before yeah. 15 minutes. I've had a couple of songs come out in 15 minutes. Matter of fact, Missing You came out in 15 minutes. But that's because it was a letter. It wasn't, I didn't sit down and write a song. I sat down and write a letter to a man who couldn't receive it. You know? Well, there you go. That's, and but, I guess, you know, if you can get it out in that span of time, I guess that's real, true emotion coming out. Which, hey, that's never a bad thing. You call so, that a gift from God. Which you there, there you go. That's. But a lot of times you got to work at it. That's an excellent song, by the way. That's everybody just heard it. If you didn't like it, I, I we can't help you. Um, so you talked about Nick Geese, one of the best guitar players around. Yeah. I mean, if you've never heard Nick, you, you need to, as soon as you're done listening to this, you need to look him up on YouTube. Listen to Way's Acoustic Album. Because, <laughs> I, was I mean, say, if you ain't heard yeah, Nick, yeah, you ain't heard much of me. Yeah. You, you have <laughs> got to hear Nick because he's just, he is a modern day maestro. So talk about. He got about, a jazz degree. Yeah, Billy was telling me that last night. See, I had never known that. He went to college for, for music. Yeah. yeah, he's got a master's in jazz guitar. So, yeah. of course, he knows guitar front, back, up, and down. But, how important was it getting him on board when you guys started putting the acoustic album together? Oh, well, we didn't really plan on putting that acoustic album together. Really? We got kind of lit one night. And uh, <laughs> I was like, let's go record something. And he said, well, hold on, let me finish this margarita. And we went and finished that margarita, and it went up there. And I said, we're recording the whole album in one night. He said, bullshit. I said, we're recording the whole album in one night. And I made it through about seven songs, and I was ready to quit. You know, he said, bullshit. <laughs> we're recording this whole damn album. He told me we're recording this whole album. We're recording this whole album. I said, well, all right, well, let's record this whole album. So we did the whole album. One, just about every song we did in one take. Really? And it came out beautiful. I mean, I, I was very happy with the way it came out. That's, that's I couldn't impressive. believe it happened, considering how much we had to drink that night. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, well, you can't tell on the receiving end, so... No, that's, that's, I had not heard that. That's really cool. That's, you know, last year was a, a really good album, or a really good year for albums. And that one, that one kind of flew under the radar. Yeah, I, I think. I don't it, have any distribution. I don't release my albums like in, where they go to Walmart to buy them. That, I try to do everything on my own. You know, we got an all in house operation going here. It ain't a big old big money operation either. It's like, hey, maybe we got gas to get to the next gig operation. You know, everything we, we put out, we put out because we have good friends who are good enough to help us, you know what I mean? That's good. And as soon as we start making some money, we're going to turn around and help them good friends back. But if we don't ever make no money, they ain't expecting it, you know what I mean? So, we're just kind of, we're gypsies, man. That's what we do. We run around, we put on shows, we have good times with good folks, and uh, we try our best everywhere we go. That's what we do. Well, you can't beat that. So, is there any plans for you and Billy and Nick to get back together and do some more stuff? Well, we'll always play together every once in a while, I reckon. But, you know, as far as right now, the band situation I got going on right now is, is something I want to stick with. Because my goal is, my favorite band ever was Leonard Skinner. <clears throat> I want to be better than Skinner. And that's something you can't say, but that's something I'm saying right now. That's I tall order to fill. I want to be better than Skinner. 
and that's going to be hard to do. But you guys have already, you know, I can't say enough how good a core you've got. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm a lucky man. Absolutely. You guys are, are getting real tight. I mean, you guys have been together now as, as a group for just a couple of weeks. Six and weeks. I mean. But I finally got my dueling guitars. Yeah, yeah. I got one hell of a drummer back there, and I got a bass player like none other. He just, he's solid. He don't ever miss a lick. And well, if he does, I don't notice it. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and take another short break. And when we come back, we're going to have the members of The Unwanted join us here in the studio. And we'll talk to them and see how things are going with them. Ah, that's going to be really fun. Be sure to stick around for that. But in the meantime, I want to play one of Way's newest songs that he's written. And he's been performing out on the road with these guys. So here's Way with his new song, The Truth. This one's called The Truth. Raised up on Section 8 In hand-me-down
Welcome back to the Country Music Armadillo Show. I'm joined now by Way Jennings and the Unwanted have joined in. Guys, thanks for joining us. We're having a good time here today. Uh, we're going to introduce the band now, so uh, let's go ahead and start with the cat here on my left. Way likes to call him the, the prettiest man in the room, which personally I take that as an insult. Uh, Danny, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm the pretty one. <laughs> yep, I'm Danny Thompson. I'm, uh, I play guitar with Way from Oklahoma, Enid, Oklahoma. Um, I've only been with him about what, maybe six weeks now. About six Something weeks. Like that. Yeah. It's been a wild ride. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been playing guitar for oh, probably 25 years, 30 years now. Finally having fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> now, how exactly is it that you came to get involved with Way? Man, it's really kind of a strange story. Uh, the other guitar player over here, Daryl, he's from the same town as me. We grew up together a little bit, playing music and stuff, and somehow he lucked into him in Wichita, Kansas. They, they ran right, into each other. Right and, time. Yeah, and he just brought me along. So, luck of the draw. Hey, you can't beat that. You talked about Daryl. Daryl, let's go ahead and throw it over to you. I'm Daryl. I'm also from Enid, Oklahoma. Play the guitar. Been playing since I was about 17. Uh, Country music mostly for years and years just happened to be my forte. Stumbled into a job. <laughs> Stumbled right <laughs> on into the job. Having the time of my life. Now you can't beat <coughs> that. Let's go to the newest member of the band and also the youngest. We got young Taylor back here. Go ahead and step on up to the plate, son. Let's see what you got. <laughs> well, I'm Taylor. I've been playing drums since I was about I think, 10 years old. Hi, Taylor. <laughs> Get him some chicken wings. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, chicken wings. Um, that's, that's for the next interview. <laughs> well, I was walking down a sidewalk one day. One day, my uh, friend Justin texted me and said, "You want to play drums for Way Bands?" And I said, "Heck yeah! Here I am." <laughs> now you're the youngest member. How young are you? <laughs> I'm uh, 20 years young. Man. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain sometimes. So, <laughs> so he's getting a, a a lesson in life on the fly from you guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're responsible. We're <laughs> responsible. <laughs> uh, 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 the smirk <laughs> on your face, I don't know how much I believe that. All right, let's go ahead and throw it over to the senior member here. We got Mr. Jack Stephen Dempsey. Yep. Jack? Jack Attack. Well, I've been playing music on my life. Southern rock, blues, outlaw country. When I heard Boy was auditioning for a bass player, I said, that's what I want to do. So I went to Lubbock, Texas, and I auditioned for the job. I got the job. It's been about a year and a half now. It's still what I want to do. <laughs> We're going to rock on. So you've been taking care of him ever since then? No, sir. He takes care of himself. <laughs> he has a high constitution. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, now, so which one of you guys is the den mother? Who, who's <laughs> rounding you guys up of a night? Well, she ain't here today. <laughs> okay, so, go, ahead, go ahead and introduce her for us, then, Wade. Her name's Angel Gonzalez. She's my booking agent, manager, love of my life, and at home. She's taking a little bit of a break, but uh, that's okay. We can do it ourselves, baby. <laughs> <laughs> or try anyways. We're going to tell you we're doing it ourselves anyway. At the time of this recording, they were not incarcerated, I promise. No, All he, right, he just so bailed us out 30 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> He's only made his cell phone. Don't, don't tell my wife that. <laughs> so, I weren't supposed to spend that money. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Baby on the way, bailing you guys out. This is not going to end well. Uh, so, what's it like for you guys playing with Way? I mean... He's the obviously the grandson of a legend. You guys are out on the road with him. Is 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 there any time where that's like, wow, I'm 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 out here playing with Waylon Jennings' grandson? All the time. It's yeah, always like that. It's, it's an honor, man. It's, it really is. The first, uh, I don't know how I live with myself. I, I don't really like him, but I like playing with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's you know, not it's true, not man. I love you too, Danny. He's been real. Yeah, I love you too, man. <laughs> You've been real good to us. We travel around and. Suburban, yeah. pulling a trailer like the rest of the people on our circuit. They were walking, rough. <laughs> Dallas Moore, they all traveling much the same rig. But, you know, it's all about the music. It's not about the big Nashville. 
but not about the smell coming from the back seat either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I want to know what that is. Yeah, it's all about the one coming from the front seat. <laughs> Hey, man, we talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the best way I could put it is there's a fork in the road. You could either go left or you can go right. We go right through the middle. <laughs> yeah, that's, first, that's it. That's it. Wonder why we get so many flats. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you guys are obviously all good friends. You guys gel well. Yeah, we're doing great, man. You guys don't, don't seem to hate each other, which, you know, I personally know some bands that you know i've been told hey we get in the fucking rv and we don't we'll go eight hours without talking and that doesn't seem to be a problem with you guys and that's that's good but that's nice huh? oh <laughs> 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 so that may be the new trend moving forward then so what band was that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah are they taking applications <clears throat> so Let's talk about some road stories because I'm sure Ooh, now. Boy. Now keep it appropriate. Uh, you know, keep well, it. Which one you want to do? You want to talk about road stories? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like Vegas, man. What happens okay. when the road stays on the road? You know? As long as the statute of limitations has has passed, <laughs> we just meet each other. You really think that's that? See, it was midnight in New Mexico. You know, <laughs> that was a plug. So. <laughs> maybe maybe we'll work that in times we have some bad times just like any other band you know we could we eat good sometimes we eat bad sometimes <laughs> sometimes we stay with friends sometimes we stay in hotels you know but it just depends we, but all the time we're working on music that's what we do that's we that's music. great that's great so way you've got this band and it's it's a fairly new band for you Again, but yeah. <laughs> you seem you, you really love what you've got. So, what do these guys being with you mean to you? Oh, they mean the world to me. They, they, I was in a bind like you wouldn't believe, man. I made a fool of myself one night and lost just about everything. And uh, I was kind of worried. And I started doing auditions, trying to build another band in a hurry. It only had like two weeks off. So, uh, a friend of mine, Rose Hartman, brought this guy over to my house. And, I was like, and he had this weird looking little guitar. <laughs> it was like acoustic, I guess, but it was like a backpacker is what they called it again. It looked like it could have been a tennis racket with the head missing off of it. <laughs> okay. But he, but I put, told him to use my black guitar. He put it on and played a little bit. And, uh, it worked out. And then the next day I woke up and he was looking at me like, can I hire him? Can you hire my friend, please? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I need you. He's like, he's like. Well, that was. <laughs> he was really adamant about wanting, about wanting me to meet his friend. And so I was like, okay, bring him on up here. And he did, and we've all been fucking messing Jack around had, ever since. Jack had part to do with that, too. So. Yeah. Yeah, I got I to gotta say it's an honor to play with Mr. Jack Dempsey as well, you know. Yeah, the legends are true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad it happened. It's only, it's we got to do. We got to give a shout out to our buddy Cookie Monster back over here for letting us hang out too and taking care of us. And I'm Big David <laughs> Fletcher over there. We're coming to you live from David Fletcher's living room. I I say the uh, studio, but uh, little embellishment. <laughs> and this is where we yeah. hang out when we're in Indianapolis. Oh yeah, he's right here with Cookie. Good people. You can't beat Dave and Tina. So you guys are out on the road, just damn near all the time, touring regularly. Yeah, so yeah. what? What's your upcoming schedule look like? Well, from here, let's see. From here, we go to Iowa, and then up to South Dakota, and then I got dropped down to Wichita because a good friend of mine, Vernon, died in, in Wichita, just out of nowhere. They're doing a benefit concert for him, so we're going to go down there and do that. And then I have to really have to look at my schedule after that, but we're booked all the way through September, and we're just going to keep that truck rolling. This is what we're going to do. Just every, I hope to see a bunch of people out there at these gigs. Just come on out, because we like to have a good time. If people feel like having a good time, come on out. I promise. You guys give them a good time for sure. You guys got to come meet Taylor. He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> he flowered the virgin. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> there you go, ladies. Taylor is available if you're looking. So now that you've got, <laughs> if you're looking, <laughs> if, or if you're not looking, I guess that hey, that's all. No, all no, to pay no attention to what. <laughs> <laughs> so now that you've got this hey, band, <clears throat> <laughs> we're losing control here, folks. No. Uh, so now that you've got this band together, 
a logical next question and the next step, have you started talking about getting into the studio with them, putting together yeah. an album? Yeah, we're scheduled to be recorded by a good friend of mine named Moten Greater Joe. I did a festival, a couple of festivals with him last year, and uh, we all became good friends. He's from up in Wisconsin, actually from the UP of Michigan, Upper Michigan. But um, he's going to come out to more shows out there in Wisconsin and South Dakota. And he's gonna film us live, and we're gonna we're gonna um, go into his studio and we're gonna record a bit, um, my new album, which was it's gonna be a little more of an experience than I thought it was gonna be because then we just gonna have to go about it by feeling, you know what I mean? Because the time wasn't there to reverse the whole thing, but we're getting we got half of it down great right now, and I hope to have the other half down great by then. But, but we've only got about 90 days left, so. So is there any tentative release date for that? or yeah, As soon as I get it in my hands. As soon as you get it in your hands? As soon as I get That's... it in my hands, it's going on CD Baby and iTunes and Amazon and everything like that. You know. Well, I mean, you guys are, you know, you're already playing a lot of a lot of new original stuff that, you know, hasn't been on your previous album. So you guys are, are well ahead of the curve, and we'll have videos of that stuff after that album comes out. So I sure appreciate um, it, man. You're hey, doing man, a great that's... job for a lot of people. That's that's hey. This is this is what it's just what I do, man. So, <clears throat> well, thank you for that. This is one of my favorite parts, just because you you get so many different answers. You guys are out on the road in the truck. What's on the radio? What's on the radio? Wow. Uh, my thumb. <laughs> that's, a, that's a loaded question. Yeah. My thumb's on the radio. Lots of until it gets turned off. I just push the button, push the button, and push the button until we find something we can hear. <laughs> Which usually turns into eighties hair bands. Believe it or not, way likes Guns N' Roses. I love Guns <laughs> it blew my mind. <laughs> I, like, I grew up on Guns N' Roses, man. He likes Guns N' Roses and Merle Haggard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm cut from that same mold. So. I like old country, old rock and roll, the good stuff, man. That's what I like. I like soft good music. And, uh, <laughs> and Bob Seger and Aerosmith. Well, that's not pop country. There you go. So, so Taylor is not taking over the the radio and playing Little Wayne, is he? Nah, he sits in the back. Only every time. <laughs> new. It's a Paul Simon bumper. <laughs> so you guys, you guys don't even know he's in there until you unload him. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I was like kicked one of his. He sits back here and he does with his phone and he hangs out and they talk. He talks with Jack a lot and he talks with all of us a lot, I guess. And we just get along having a good time. He really keeps us feeling younger, I guess. So we, that's why we keep him around. <laughs> There there you go. Go. We're a bunch of old farts. <laughs> <laughs> well, those are your words, those not are, mine. Those are brought to you by Wade Jennings. <laughs> <laughs> not supported by yeah, family. it doesn't sound like they're endorsed by anybody else. Not with the Andy and Trying to get into well, I ain't going to say that out loud again. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'm, I'm going to open up the floor to anyone who wants to speak now. You know, I'm going to give you guys your time. Is there anything you guys want to say? <laughs> Anything I want to don't, say, uh, don't shoot me. I'm just the guy pushing the buttons. I don't feel like breaking this band up, so I ain't going to say that. <laughs> well, no, I'm, I'm giving the floor to them. I'm going to let them have their day now. No, they can say anything they want. <laughs> don't feel afraid. <laughs> I promise you, I will not put you on, on the highway. Thank you. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say no. I just want to say thank you to all these guys that are up here with me right here. Man, this is my, this is my band. We're doing really good, sounding really good. And I couldn't be happier. Yeah, and I know I'm rough on y'all sometimes, but man, you can have to understand why. Because this means the world to me, and we just had to get you up to par pretty quick. I wish all you people out there could see his face right now. He's so <laughs> sincere. I am sincere, I swear to God. I love y'all. There you go, that's the end. David Fletcher, I want my 50 cents back. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, guys. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here today, <laughs> Wade. Us, Thank you. Good, it's been a pleasure. We'll be seeing you down the road. Sounds good, man. Billy Gant, you should have been here. Yeah. I'm mad. Hey, we're going to get Billy in here on one of these interviews here real soon, probably before the end of the summer, because uh, that's must-hear must material. Yeah, definitely. This has been the Country Music Armadillo Show.